Okay, look, I know my content hasn't been all that good as it could be, but I assure you that there's a good reason for... My cat has a beautiful mustache and perfect eyes. I can't imagine we're talking about the same cat. Uh, okay, you got me. I was busy wasting my time with this mess of a game, Yik. And yes, I'm well aware it's pronounced Y2K, but Yik sounds better for how I want to express my thoughts on this game. Oh, you know what? That's fucking gross, dude. It's sure, I could be talking about all the E3 stuff that's going on, but now, nah, talk about the game that came out months ago. Way to be on the ball, coming with your upload schedule and talking about something relevant. And then I've effectively spoiled my thoughts on this game within the first minute of this and rendered my review completely useless. But hey, that's just a running theme of this game. You were just upset you lost your ice cream, admit it! So what is Yik? Well, to some people it's a game, to others it's entertainment, and to some it's a decent fun time. But to be specific, Yik is an RPG. <laughs> A role-playing game. Typically, RPGs are often characterized by the fact that you are able to take the reins of another character. More often than not, with turn-based combat, leveling system, a story, and of course, playing the role of another character. And before I get into the actual review here, I believe it's important to address something. With the age of the indie video game scene, there's been a bit of a trend that's been running around with various kinds of games. Yume Nikki, Least the Painful, and of course the works of Toby Fox, and many others have cited or make reference to a certain game. Earthbound, Mother 3, or whatever name this game goes by nowadays. You can sometimes see this art style in the games or even the writing, often taking elements from the classical Nintendo title, either with the quirky humor or with the aesthetics. I mean, unless you say the story in Lisa has elements of Earthbound in it. Everywhere. Then again, there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from another source of material, so long as you don't outright take it from the source material itself. Like lately stealing artwork from games or taking jokes that are obviously ripped from the source material. <coughs> However, if there is an issue with the this is inspired by that or branching off that, this is a spiritual successor to. Is that can also be presented as a false source of quality to the game. And unfortunately, nostalgia has been weaponized to create some of the less than the products that we've seen in the last few years. Fucking gross, dude. It's I guess what I'm saying is just because something is inspired by something or holds familiarity to another product, that doesn't denote quality. And unfortunately, Yik is one of those titles with less than stellar quality. So, since we wasted enough of the viewers' time in order to give you guys a taste of how the writing is in this game, I figured it's time we talk about the actual game. This is your last chance to click off the video since I'm going to be talking about Shock of All Shocks, the story and characters, since that'll be one of the biggest things to discuss about this game. At this point, I guess most people have already clicked off this video and watching some schmucks video about, I don't know, what's the latest drama of the week? Twitch is in trouble again! Twitch did a big oopsie! And if you're still here, what do I know? So, what is Yik? You take on the role of Alex, a recent college graduate, returning to his hometown in order to do something. It's not exactly clear since he's in that awkward phase where college graduates find themselves in if they don't have a job lined up after college and are unsure about their future. Hijinks ensue in which you meet a girl named Sammy and her cat, whom for some reason she messes up the gender of said cat. At least we found Dolly. Imagine how much worse it would have been without her. But usually Dolly is better about keeping me company, you know? He's not always just running off to God knows where. And then Sammy gets kidnapped by... <laughs> A bad music video of as it were. And now it's up to you to deal with this mess. You know, typical RPG schlock, basic formula. Now there's nothing wrong with this setup, it certainly has a good idea going on and Alex at first can make a decent character that people can see themselves in. So Chuck went up for relatability and honestly there are a lot of things that I could say that are positive about Alex since there are a few things that people can see themselves in with the character. So there's him dealing with the lack of direction in his life, his father not being present, and of course him being lonely. I know that all too well apparently. It's not a bad thing to have a character who's flawed and deals with such issues. And in fact, one can actually say that's good. For a lot of people, direction of their future is often an issue that everyone has to deal with at one time or another. I mean, I certainly didn't think I'd be sitting here after school making YouTube videos and that will probably get less views than the number of brain cells I have. But since you've got enough brain cells to read the title of this video, most of the people at this point have realized there's an issue with Alex and the writing. One of the biggest issues is how Alex, well, lack for a better word. You guys realize how messed up all this is? My 12 year old sister killed herself. She died right here. Right where we're standing. Hey, dude, cool it with that! No one cares about your sister right now! We almost just died ourselves! He's a prick. He'll treat his friends like trash throughout the story, and while he does get called out here and there, he still does it. Until for some reason his friends all of a sudden like him and don't care for his terrible attitude. Oh, and it turns out Alex is like the most important person in every reality that we ever known. Oh, there's a big surprise! 
So yeah, you've got an unlikable jerk protagonist. Of course, I'm being a bit hyperbolic for the sake of entertainment. However, while I do find myself being related to Alex a lot of the time, getting that reminder that he's such an ass immediately takes me out of that sensation. You're cool with that. No one cares about your sister right now. We all just die ourselves. Although, if you ask some people, it might be because it rings too close to home for me, and that resemblance is uncanny. It's not if it's I'm against the idea of playing an unlikable or a prick-like character. One of my favorite series, Disgaea, has a lot of protagonists who are jerks. The only difference between Alex and these little demons is that there's a bit of entertainment with them. You can actually see them interact with other characters, and while it's definitely not a positive thing, they're played up for laughs through the reaction of the characters as well as how over the top they're willing to play the character. Oh, did I just step on something? Don't owe me! You've destroyed everything! Not my PlayStation Portable! Alex, however, is boring in that regard. And what doesn't help is there appears to be some really weird time scaling, and what I mean by this is that the game makes it seem like months pass by really quick, with implications that the cast are getting closer, though we never actually see it. Like, imagine if in Persona 5, instead of living out each day where you got to choose whether you train mementos, work your job, or hang out with a large cast of characters, where you could possibly get bonuses for doing that when you use Personas, or got bonuses in battle with the main party, you just did the main story and just went to sleep every night. Curse you, Morgana! Certainly would cut down those 64 hours. I'm not advocating Yik to become like Persona 5. I'm not that much of a sadist. But I'm not going to pretend that this isn't an issue in the writing and offer the developer a hug. It can be something as simple as there being adding more scenes with Alex chilling with the crew without anything at stake, or even have some dialogue between characters at the beginning or ending of the battles, showing that the cast are getting along with each other. Don't even have to voice them, but it would be something to add a bit more in activity between the main cast and show that they are getting along with each other. I suppose at this time I should talk about the other characters and how, frankly, their issues with the plot. All you ever do is complain! While you do get Sammy as a party member, the actual first party member you get is Michael, who decides that using a camera is the best way to smack enemies around. I swear to you that I'm either a complete inept or that Michael doesn't really have much of a speaking role throughout a good chunk of the game. I mean, what we get is him being afraid of the future, which is like Alex, a relatable character trait, but much like his shirt later in the game, it's dust in the wind. And then he begins to get all zen with his oddly hairy chest. Well, that's a unique choice in character design for this game. We also have Vela, and who boy, she's a bit of a mess. Vela is supposed to be the expository character to explain all the hoopla! Hoopla! happening in the game's plot. I say supposed to, but there's more questions that I have about the character and explanations that flew over my head. I think it's a golden alpaca. Damn it, we need to run! Come on, let's get out! Then again, considering what my priorities are nowadays, it could easily just be a me problem. What isn't a me problem is a few things that go against the logical world that's set up. One of the biggest is how Vela is able to get a job and somewhere to live without any identification. And she clearly states she doesn't have a social security number, which just raises so many questions that the game does not want to answer. Supposedly it's because she's from another universe, but it still didn't explain how the hell she got a job or a house or someplace to live. And frankly, if I kept going on with the characters, my issues with them, I'm probably gonna find myself spiraling down into oblivion, so I think I've made my point about the characters. Although, shock of all shocks, I actually have to talk about one other character when we get to the gameplay section. So, just in case this review isn't already making you want to commit genocide video style, I've given you another Now, I know I've droned on and on about the characters, and I'm sure people aren't too thrilled for me to continue talking, but really, there was a reason why I brought this up, and it's because the writing is so overbloated at times that I had to make sure I didn't accidentally click off and go to the dark side of DeviantArt. What I mean by this is that the game often has Alex exposit so much or have things be repeated so much that half the time I was mashing through the dialogue just to get through it. Pro tip to writers, the fewer words you can use, the better. This is especially true when you've got a medium like video games, since, well, it's show. Don't tell. But Yik likes to tell. And tell. And tell. And tell. And tell. And do you get the point yet? That's a fair critique. But you don't want to listen to them because of the way they said it. One such example of this stellar writing choice is at the beginning of the game. And to illustrate my point and to tease the copyright bots, let me show you the scene in question. She didn't know elevators. I doubted she'd know her 20th century Spanish cattle and surrealist painters all that well either. I said, right, I saw a cat earlier. He had a funny mustache and crazy eyes. Naturally, my description of her beloved feline was offensive to her. Clearly, this was a woman projecting a rather strong personality onto this cat. She took a deep breath and said quickly, 
my cat has a beautiful mustache and perfect eyes. I can't imagine we're talking about the same cat. It's all well and good to have a monologue inside a character set to see what they're thinking, but the game decides to waste your time with things that didn't need to be said, either the actions of the poses, or even having the characters themselves outright saying they would have been enough. And this is something that happens throughout the entirety of the game. It's almost as if the creators of the game just took a fanfiction that they wrote up in college and slapped it down to the gaming script, and not bother to actually clean it up. And I say fanfiction because I can recognize it because I used to write that junk when I was very young and still lacked the mental facilities to operate a car's driving system. And no, you cannot find my fanfiction page. In a sense, the game likes to slog through its story, which wouldn't be a bad thing if the gameplay were to pick it up. Unfortunately, when it comes to RPGs, especially turn-based, you can find a bit of issues with having slogging through combat systems and the level system. A lot of RPGs find a way past this by streamlining the attacks and making it so you can easily just select an attack and it'll follow through. Regulating the fancier attacks and those that would be obviously have a fancier buildup or have requirements to pull off. Unfortunately, Yik decides to take a page out of the Paper Mario Battle System, which is both a good thing, but one that really makes me want to blow my brains out. If you're not familiar with the Paper Mario RPG series, who the bloody hell are you and why are you even watching my videos, pleb? But I suppose for that one schmuck in the back watching, Paper Mario back from Nintendo decided to screw up the formula essentially had you playing mini games in order to make the attacks more effective. This can range from something like holding down the buttons or the joystick for a few seconds, or matching some timing. Essentially mini games in the combat, if you will. <laughs> It's a battle system that Yik decided to adopt for its characters. And here's where the negative man gets to be all negative again. I know, I'm sorry. To its credit, Yik does have a variety of minigames. However, the problem lies in the fact that a lot of them drag out the battles. And most of the time, they are repeated in ad nausea. What doesn't help this is also tied to defense and dodging and enemy attacks. Again, taking influence from Paper Mario. But unlike Paper Mario, whose defensive minigames require you to have careful timing and tune with specific enemy attacks for one time most of the time, Yik's defensive requires you to do three button prompts in order to dodge. Again, this wouldn't be a problem, but the minigames actually stretch out the length of unnecessary combat, especially when you consider the fact that the enemies for the most part only take a few rounds to kill. And the fact that to keep doing it for them throughout the entire game is, well, well let's just say after I played this game for a second time, it made me question some other purchases other than this game. And now let's time to talk about another character and how dodging mechanic has practically made him useless. There's a character you get named Rory. Not only does this character not actually have a standard attack, but rather he has the ability to protect one other character in battle. So let me explain how this is a rather dumb in the grand scheme of things. For one thing, you practically made him a redundant character since the game already has a sterilized mechanic that all the other characters have access to in order to dodge or lessen any damage they have. But you've also made it so you can't really do anything to help the battles go by faster by taking away the ability to attack. Don't get me wrong, having the ability to defend allies in theory isn't a bad mechanic for a character to have. In fact, we've seen this be used in other games. One such would have to be the protect move from Pokemon or having your party members push you out of the way the Persona series for a death blow. However, when you consider that in those games, the character's basic attacks aren't replaced with that move and it isn't made redundant by a basic game mechanic. It doesn't help that Alex, our protagonist, also has his panda shield which is essentially doing the same thing. And yes, I get it, Rory is a pacifist. He wouldn't fight. But just because there's a reason for your BS doesn't mean I have to like your BS. Nor does it mean I can't put on how redundant it is if I believe the ability is redundant. Speaking of which, I suppose I could talk about the leveling system now, the Mind Dungeon. Again, in concept, the Mind Dungeon seems like a good idea. In it, you can choose how you want to develop Alex, choosing what stats you want to improve. But, and I can't believe you guys haven't expected this, the fact of the matter is you have to go out of your way to enter the specific area, running around to upgrade the stats. So more wasting the player's time. I feel that this should be a real title of the game. Yik. A colossal waste of time! I get the developers are trying to make the game unique, and while I can say they definitely succeeded, just because something is unique, that doesn't equate to something being good. In fact, sometimes uniqueness can be a detriment, and I think that Yik is a prime example of that. Which is a shame! Yik, while not a good game story or mechanic-wise, in my opinion, does sport a few positives. While not my own personal tastes, which again, people tell me aren't the best, the graphics are of the game are pleasing to the eyes. Throw in that surreal otherworldly twist, and you've got some scenes that can be quite memorable, and the game certainly doesn't shy away from colors. Coupled with an aesthetic that you'd see from the N64 age, I think you've got an art style that would appeal to many people. In addition, the music is fine. I mean, you've got a lineup of musical talent including Toby Fox in there, so there's that. However, unfortunately, even with those positives, it isn't enough to actually make me want to recommend the game. It doesn't matter how much frosting and effort you put on your cake, you for some reason thought it'd be a good idea to throw a bunch of salt into the mix, and this is what you get. 
I'm glad the game wasn't Grey Box Simulator, but pretty graphics and music won't make it up for the shortcomings. And considering that for some reason, whenever I talk about indie games, their creators somehow find out that I've talked about their games. So perhaps by some miracle, if the developer does see this, they'll know I'm not trying to be harsh for the sake of being harsh, but doing so for the sake of entertainment and just to point out the issues that I've had with their product. When you put out a product including one where people are paying money for it, you open yourself up to criticism. And while I do agree that in some instances that people take their criticism way too far and make themselves the look like real adults, know that my intention isn't to break down, but to build up. And for the rest of you people watching, please consider a bit of caution when you see works that are attempting to capture the magic of previous games. I uh, know, I kind of figured that after some things, you'd figure some people would be a bit more cautious when it came to nostalgia-based video games. That being said, please consider supporting my Kickstarter video game that takes inspiration from Earthbound, Pokemon, and of course, everyone's favorite game...